Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about sleep. Um, I mentioned in my video about the five immunity doctors. The doctor sleep is an extremely important doctor who has to check you every day. So let me tell you how I am going to take us through sleep and how we are going to understand sleep so that we can make a difference in our sleeping pattern. So first, I will try to explain to you why we need to sleep. Okay, let's get right into it. Why do we need to sleep? We need to sleep because when we sleep every day, there is a cycle of repair. So during the day, we are awake and we do some activity. That activity causes some amount of degeneration, toxin accumulation. When we sleep, that recovers. So when we do it in repetitive cycles, our body has a possibility to remove all the toxins which we have accumulated during the act of that particular day and remove it when we sleep during the night. And next, I will explain why we need to sleep for eight hours. So when we sleep for eight hours, what happens is we do not sleep deeply all those eight hours. The ratio is 40% of the total time we sleep we sleep deep. Now, during deep sleep, two things happen. There are two phases. The first phase, the phase of relaxation. And the second phase is the phase of healing or repair. And the phase of healing does not occur without the phase of relaxation happening first. And it is equally divided or divided into 40, 60, depending upon the activity that we have done during the day. So it is extremely important for us to get three hours of deep sleep where we relax and where our body repairs. And to get those three hours, we need to sleep eight hours in total. And this is the reason why doctor sleep has to treat you for eight hours during a day. So now that you and I have decided that we need eight hours of sleep at least every day, let us get back and see what sleep actually means. So what is sleep? defined as sleep is defined as a state of rest. So let's stop here and get back to whether we know what rest means. Rest is a condition where we decide to do lesser activity than we normally do, put ourselves in a lower state of stress and a lower state of anxiety. So when we put ourselves or when we say that we are going to take rest, then this is what we willingly do. We willingly reduce our anxiety, our stress and our activity levels. So now that we have understood what rest is, let us take it and put it in perspective with sleep. So sleep is a state of rest where we do relative inactivity. You know, when we sleep, we don't do as much activity as we normally do. Maximum, we flop our hands around or we turn then we are in an altered state of consciousness. We are not in our normal state of consciousness. We do not know what is happening as we should know it when we are in deep sleep. And third, we have an altered perception of environment. So if you think about it, sleep is actually a magical, mystical thing which we get to do every day. And it also helps in relaxation and repair of our body. So till now, we have understood why we need to sleep, why we need eight hours of sleep in order to get three hours of deep sleep and what rest and sleep actually mean. So the next thing which we are going to see are the different stages of sleep in a way which you can understand so that you know what are the physiological changes which happen when you sleep and when you wake up. Getting straight to the stages of sleep. See, sleep has technically five stages, but I am going to simplify it into falling asleep, sleeping, deep sleep and waking up. So the first stage is when you're going into the stage of rest. So this is where you go prepare your bed, dim the lights and put yourself in a state of rest so that you can start falling asleep. Once you have done that and once you're lying in bed, you actually close your eyes and you start to fall asleep. This is the next stage, which is extremely essential for us to go into the deep stage of sleep. But this stage is rapid eye movement sleep. And here we still are aware a little bit about what's happening around us. We have spatial awareness. And once 
this stage of sleep is through, we go into the most important stage of sleep, which is the stage of deep sleep. Now, this deep sleep has two parts. One is a stage of relaxation. And once the stage of relaxation finishes, our body automatically goes into the stage of repair. Now, how much time is divided for relaxation and how much time for repair depends upon what activity you have done during the day and what kind of nourishment you have taken to replenish or to support repair during the act of sleep every day. So this is the reason why you also have to focus on nourishment in order for your body to repair. Getting back to sleep, the deep stage of sleep, the first stage is when your muscles relax, your skin vasodilates, your blood vessel relaxes, your blood pressure reduces, your heart rate reduces, your breathing synchronizes and your entire physical system is in synchrony. Once this happens, your body moves from the stage of relaxation to the stage of repair. And this is the stage when all the toxins, all the damage, all the degeneration which has happened to your body that day is allowed to heal and your body recovers. So once the stage of deep sleep is over, we go back once again to rapid eye movement sleep and then we wake up. These are the five physiological stages of sleep as you should understand it. So now that we have understood the stages of sleep, I would just like to take a moment to move away from sleep and to understand this one term, which I think is extremely important for all of you. If you are someone who's trying to learn how to sleep, this is the term, the circadian rhythm. So just like we have day and night in a day, each of us are born with our own day and night. Our circadian rhythm means our internal clock. What this implies is that even though we as human beings have divided wakefulness and sleepfulness based on day and night, many of our internal clocks are not like that. And that is the reason some of us are not able to sleep during the night and some of us are not able to work during the day. I would really like to explain circadian rhythm further and the different types of internal clocks which people have, but it is not within the scope of this lecture. But please do check out my video because I will make one for sure in a few days. So before I leave you with my five simple steps of falling asleep right, let me summarize what we have seen till now. So we have seen why we need to sleep why we get just three hours of sleep where we can relax and repair ourselves even though we sleep for eight hours and we have also seen the different stages of sleep from there we understood what the circadian rhythm was and why some of us don't feel as good as the others during the day and we're not able to sleep during the night now here are my five steps on how to start sleeping good today so step number one is avoid caffeine guys. Now, if you drink coffee at 12 o'clock, the effect of the wakefulness of caffeine might disturb you for 12 to 16 hours after consumption. So if you're somebody who has disturbed sleep, I think you should stop drinking caffeine or stop it at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Step number two, there has been a direct correlation between the amount of physical activity a person does during a day and the depth of his sleep. So do as much activity as you can inside the house or outside the house in your terrace in order for you to have a longer time of deeper sleep. The third point is a very important point. You need to remember this hormone called melatonin, which helps you sleep. Generally, darkness stimulates this hormone melatonin. But now with the advent of electric lights, and now blue lights, television and cell phones, our melatonin is not stimulated as it should when darkness falls. So what you can do is go to your room and dim the lights in the room where you're planning to sleep. Set the temperature right. 24 degrees centigrade has been found to be a world favorite temperature to sleep. And also dim the lights 
in the environment where you are. I would advise leaving your phones off at nine o'clock. If there is an emergency, somebody will definitely contact you guys. And fourth is, I have to talk about this. If you think alcohol helps you sleep, it actually does, but it does not help you go into deep sleep. Alcohol has been spoken as a medication which helps people sleep, but it only works when you take 60 ml at 30 ml per hour, three hours before you sleep. If you take it at any other time, especially when you're close to sleep, it might help you sleep, but it will not help your heart rate and breathing synchronize. So you will find it really hard to go into deep sleep. Then five, clear your bladder before you sleep and keep some water right next to you so that you can hydrate yourself when you feel dehydrated, especially when you're sleeping with the air conditioner on. So this is it guys, my five simple steps. And I hope this was useful. If you guys liked it and found it useful, subscribe to my channel so that you can get regular updates. See you soon guys. Bye-bye.